this video, we'll explore the difference between ideal gas behavior and non-ideal gas behavior. In order for a gas to behave ideally, we assume that the volume of the gas is the volume of the container. We ignore the volume of the gas because the gas particle is so tiny compared to the distance between the gas particles. Also, we assume for ideal gas behavior that there's no attraction between the individual gas particles. They're all moving independently and are unaware of each other's presence. This is what we think of when we think of gases behaving ideally. Now, as it turns out, there are instances in which gases behave non-ideally, and that is the condition when the gas is moving towards being a liquid. For example, if you increase the pressure and or decrease the temperature, you have evidence you've seen before that you can liquefy gases. There must be some sort of borderline between ideal gas behavior and non-ideal gas behavior and the liquid state. So we have different equations to describe different um, behaviors. First of all, the ideal gas law you're familiar with that the pressure of the gas times the volume of the gas equals the number of moles of gas present times the uh, gas constant times the absolute temperature of the gas. That's the ideal gas law. And this law holds up really well for, for gases under what we would consider relatively low pressure situations. Well, what's relatively low pressure? Well, atmospheric pressure is considered relatively low pressure. Um, so just under normal conditions, the gases around us, for example, in the atmosphere, are behaving ideally. The hard sphere model uh, that we looked at was uh, accounting for the fact that under high pressure, um, as we approach conditions of high pressure, we're starting to push those gas particles closer together. And in this situation, we can no longer ignore the uh, volume that the gas particles take up when we uh, compute the volume. And so we had a correction term. Um, so we have the pressure and we have a correction term for the volume, which was NB. And um, with the correction term, we can still have uh, the pressure times the volume corrected equals NRT. So uh, in this case, the gas is behaving uh, non-ideally. And we've accounted for that with this correction term where N is the number of uh, moles of gas and B is a unique correction term uh, for all different gases. It needs to be, or all different molecules, it needs to be uh, experimentally determined, but it corrects for uh, the space taken up by the gas particles. So in this case, what we're saying is the gas is no longer free to move throughout that entire volume, which is the container. Okay, throughout the entire volume. So we have a correction term. Whoops, correct entire volume. And the correction term is NB. There's another equation, uh, the Van der Waals equation, that is also an equation that describes gases that are behaving um, non ideally. In the Van der Waals equation, uh, we recognize that under conditions of high pressure, and low temperature that the attractive forces um, between the gas particles uh, have an effect on the behavior of the gas. So it's no longer going to be uh, behaving ideally. And so now we have a correction term for the pressure and for the volume. The correction term for the volume is that same correction term NB. Um, B for the Van der Waals equation in this case and times the number of moles uh, because again under conditions of high pressure, low temperature, um, in particular high pressure where you're squeezing the gas particles essentially closer together, um, you cannot, uh, they are not free to move around all the volume. Now if the particles start attracting one another we have a correction term for the pressure. And in this case, the uh, pressure correction term is A times N squared, where N is the number of gas moles, divided by V squared, where V is the volume. A is the experimentally determined um, constant that is uh, unique for each different uh, type of gas. 
and then we still have our correction term for the volume, minus nb equals nrt. This is the van der Waals equation. So there are tables and tables of a values and b values um, for the van der Waals equations that have been experimentally determined. So if you start working under non-ideal um, conditions, for example, you are a chemical engineer and you're working in a uh, chemical plant and you're running a reaction under high pressure, then uh, your gases will not be behaving ideally most likely and you should use the ideal gas or excuse me the van der Waals equation instead of the ideal gas law um, to compute for example the number of moles uh, that you've uh, reacted or whatnot uh, so anyway this is a very important equation to be aware of um, you don't need to memorize it necessarily but you should be aware of it and know how to use it and know that this term the NB term is correcting for the volume and the A times N squared over V squared is correcting for the pressure. In this case, what's happening is the measured pressure when the um, gas is behaving non-ideally will be less than the measured pressure, so we have to add the correction term, whereas the volume uh, in which the gas can move will be less than the measured volume, so we have to subtract the correction term.